Welcome to Microsoft Access 2013 Beginner Level 1, brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com here on YouTube. This video is Lesson 6 of 12 plus an introduction. If this is the first video you're watching in the series, click on the link shown to start this course in the beginning. Otherwise, we'll start Lesson 6 right now. In Lesson 6, we're going to begin entering data into our customer table. We have this brand new customer table that we've built, but so far it's empty. Let's go ahead and put some records into it. Let's double click on the customer table to open it up. There it is. This is data sheet view. Data sheet view looks like a big spreadsheet, but in Access they call it a data sheet. You can switch between design view and data sheet view right here. If you click on this button up top here, that'll switch you over to design view and then notice how it changes back again to datasheet view or you can drop this little box down and pick from this list. Design view is where you build the table. Datasheet view is where you enter data into the table. Now the first field in our table is our customer ID. That's our auto number. Now since there's no record there yet, that number has not been assigned. As soon as we start typing in some data, into this row, into this record, you'll notice the next auto number will populate into that field, which should be one. Remember, you cannot edit an auto number, so Access takes care of that for you. So I'm going to press the tab key on my keyboard to move over to the first name field. You can use your mouse if you want to, to click on whatever field you want. But I find that when I'm doing data entry, it really helps to learn the keyboard shortcuts. So tab to move to the next field, shift tab, hold down the shift key and press tab to move back a field, or you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard. So in the first name field, I'll type in myself, Richard. Now notice as soon as I do, auto number one is assigned to customer ID. And also notice the little pencil appears over here in the left hand side. That pencil means that you're currently editing this record. All right, so I'll press tab. Now I'm in the last name field. I'll put my last name in, tab. Now this field says company na. That's because it's too narrow to show all the data. You can widen these columns out by clicking here and dragging, just like in Excel. See how I move the mouse there and it changes to a double pointing arrow, right, right there. You can click and drag to resize these columns however you want to. So I'll type in my company name, Access Learning Zone, tab. As a shortcut, by the way, let's say this is that wide, you can double click on that spot, double click, and it will widen out the column as wide as it has to be to fit the data in the column. That's a little trick from Excel, too. Continuing on, I'll tab over to address. I'll put my address in here, 3380 Sheridan Drive Suite. 259, tab. Now as you tab to the right, notice that the fields disappear. You can keep tabbing and Access will scroll for you automatically or you can use the scroll bar on the bottom, like that. City of Amherst, State of New York. Now I'm going to abbreviate all of my states with two characters which is fine for all the U.S. states and Canadian provinces. If you have foreign customers, type in whatever valid state you need to. Yes, it is certainly possible to make this a drop-down list where you can pick from a list of states. I will talk about combo boxes in a future class. A combo box is a combination text box and drop-down list where you can either type in a value or pick from a list. For today, we'll just type in two characters. Tab. I'll type in my postal code, my zip code, 14226. Now, if you want to put a zip plus 4 in here, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can type it in if you want to, or you can make a separate field, a second field, to store that zip plus 4. That's how I like doing it. I like putting that in a separate field. But I will leave that decision up to you. Different countries have different postal code formats, so I want to be able to type in whatever text I want here. If you work strictly with customers inside the United States, you may want to force the user only to type in five digits here. 
and I will teach you in Access Beginner 3, level 3, how you can limit the user to type in only a certain number of digits, and we'll set up something called an input mask, which forces them to enter in the data in a way that you want. Continuing on, now the country field I'm going to leave blank. I generally recommend that you leave customers from your home country blank. So if you're in Canada, don't bother putting Canada in there for home customers. Of course, that's completely up to you. I don't want to type in United States or every one of my local customers. Tab, email address, I'll type in richard at amicron.com. Notice how it comes in as a hyperlink. I'll widen that out a little bit. If I were to move my mouse over it, see I get the little hyperlink finger, and notice the pop-up says mail to richard at amicron.com. That's because Access realized that's an email address because of the at symbol. And so if I click on that now, it will launch my email program. And there it is. My default email program is currently set to Gmail, so my web browser actually opened, and I can just type in the subject. Hi there. Notice the recipient's email address is automatically specified for us. Of course, when you click on that email hyperlink, your default email program will load up. Generally, that's Microsoft Outlook if you're using Microsoft Office. For my website, I'll type in accesslearningzone.com tab. Notice the www isn't required, and you don't have to type in the http colon slash slash if you don't want to. That's assumed. If Access doesn't see that that's an email link, it'll assume it's a web page link. Now for phone number, again, this is up to you, but the customers that I tend to call are customers here in the United States. I very seldom make international calls. So I like to type in just the digits. Here in the U.S., phone numbers are 10 digits long. For example, mine is 716-791-7510. And then I'll press Tab. Now, it doesn't look very good like that, but later on I'm going to teach you how to format that however you want to. You can show parentheses around the area code. You can put dashes in there or dots or whatever you want. We'll get to that later. You want to have all of the phone numbers, or as many as possible at least, with a uniform format. If you have people typing in phone numbers any which way, your data becomes very messy. And it's very hard to do any kind of querying on this later. Again, if you just want to pull up a phone number so you can read it and type it in your phone and call someone, that's fine. But if you have to do any kind of reporting on that, like let's say you need to generate a list of all your customers in the 716 area code, if your data is stored properly with just the digits, you can very easily say, okay, show me the left three characters, and then you'll get just the 716. But if you've got people typing in parentheses or all kinds of different weird stuff, you can't do that. So for now, get in the habit of typing in just the digits. Again, later on, in Access Beginner Level 3, I'm going to teach you about input masks where you can force users to only type in the digits that you want. So we'll get to that eventually, but for today, we're just going to type in the digits. Okay, so this brings us to the num employees field. I'll type in two, then I'll press tab. Discount rate. I'm going to give myself a 50% discount. I'm going to type in the percent sign. Press tab. Now notice what happens. Access converted 50% to 0 0.5. In Access, just like in Excel, percentages are considered fractions of one. So 50% is 0.5. 100% is one. So unless you specifically format the field to display as a percentage, then you will see the decimal version. I will teach you how to change the format in a future class. For now, if you want 50%, you can either type in 50 with the percent sign or 0.5. Both are the same thing. Moving on, we have the customer sense field. Now, customer sense is a date time field. So that means in this field you can store either a date or a time or both. So I can type in today's date, which is 8 slash 16 slash 13, and I get August 16, 2013. I could type in, let's say, 4 colon 55, and I get 4.55 a.m. That's a valid time format. 
If you type in just a date, let's say 4 slash 1, without a year, you get the current year by default. Now my system is set to the United States, so I'm getting month, day, year. If you're in Britain or other countries that use a different format, you'll get day, month, year. That's all depending on your Windows system settings. That's not something that you set in Access. That's in your Windows control panel under Regional Settings. Now there are a bunch of different ways you can type in data. For example, you can type in Feb space 1, and it gets that as February 1st. You can type in the full name, February 1st, and it gets that too. Access is pretty smart. You can type in a combination date time, like 4 or 5 space 3 p.m., like that, and that works, right? April 5th at 3 p.m. You can type in 24-hour format if you want to, for example, 2300, like that, and you get 11 o'clock p.m. And again, in a future class, I'll show you how you can format that field to display however you want to. If you want to display 24-hour time, that's fine. We'll cover that in level 3. Sometimes you'll see this happen. If I type in like 12, 12, space, 9 p.m., sometimes you get that, all those little pound symbols, those hash marks, right? That just means that the column is too narrow. So again, we can either double-click here or click and drag to widen it out. So that's the default way that Access displays dates and times. And again, when we get to formatting, I will teach you how to display that however you want. For right now, I don't think we need a time on our customer sense. So let's go with just, um, how about 3190? That's how long that's been a customer. One of the nice features that was added in Access 2010 was the date picker. So if you click on a date field, you'll see this little calendar pops up next to it. Click on that, and you'll see a calendar below the date field. You can scroll through the months by using these little arrows right here. You can select the date by just clicking on it. You can jump to today's date right there. So if you find this easier, feel free to use that. Now, a few quick notes on dates before we continue. First, yes, there is a way to set a default date to today's date. So if you're adding new records in, like you're putting orders in the system or contact management, you can automatically have this default to today's date, so you don't have to keep typing it in. I will show you that in a future lesson when we cover default values. Again, that's covered in Access Beginner Level 3. Again, I already mentioned this, if you just type in 3-4, you get the current year. Now, if you type in a two-digit year from 0 to 29, Access assumes it's 2000 to 2029. So if I type in 5-5-10, you get 2010. If your number is from 30, to 99, Access assumes it's 1930 to 1999. So if I go 6687, you get 1987. The cutoff year is 1930. There's 30, you get 1930. If I go 29, you get 2029. That again is set in your Windows Control Panel. That's not an Access setting. That's in Windows Control Panel under Regional Settings and then Date and Time Settings. I show you how to change that in my Windows classes. Okay, moving on. Next we have the credit limit, which is a currency value. You can see that Access automatically formats it with a dollar sign. Of course, if you're in a foreign country, you'll get whatever your currency symbol is. And again, that's a Windows regional setting. That is not an Access setting. But if I type in 2000, I get $2,000 like that. Next up is the is active field. It's a yes or no value. Notice that access defaults to giving us a checkbox. Now you can use your mouse to click on it if you want to. There's yes, there's no, true, false, on, off, whatever you want to call it. You can also use the keyboard. You can use the space bar. I'm pressing the space bar right now to toggle that on and off. I know when I'm typing in data into a table, I don't want to have to stop and grab the mouse and click on something. I just want to go and start typing. So if you hit a yes, no checkbox, just use the space key. Next we have the notes field. You can type pretty much as much stuff as you want into a notes field. They're pretty big, 65,000 plus characters. I've never hit the end of a notes field in, in practical databases. Yeah, I hit it once because we were trying to, but you're never realistically going to use a notes field completely. So type whatever you want. Rick is a swell guy. 
or whatever other information you want in there. Now you can resize this column if you want, but if you really want to see a lot more area to type in your notes, hit Shift F2 on your keyboard. Hold down the Shift key and press the F2 function key. And that opens up the zoom window. You can zoom in on any field you want to, so you have lots more room in here to type in your notes, right? He is really cool. He loves computers, and so on. Whatever you want to type in there. If you press Enter, that's the same as hitting OK. So if you want to leave breaks in here, it's Control Enter. Hold down the Control key and press the Enter key. This is a new paragraph. And then when you press Enter, it brings you back to the Notes field. Now when you're all done with your notes, press the Tab key, and Access brings you down to the next row. Now notice the pencil is gone. The little pencil has gone from the left-hand side there. As soon as you finish typing in that record, Access saves the data to the table. So you don't have to worry about constantly saving your data entry. Whenever you make a change and then leave the record or move to a new record, Access saves the data in the table. If I come back here and make an edit, notice the pencil's back. As soon as I leave that record, the pencil goes away. So now that change has been saved to the table. You only have to get in the habit of hitting Save, that Control-S key that I taught you about, or the little Save button on the toolbar, after you make design changes. When you're working on changing the structure of your table, or you're designing a query or a form, then you want to get in the habit of hitting Save often. But during data entry, you don't have to worry about it. As soon as you leave the record, the record is saved. Some access terminology, by the way, that pencil, if you see the pencil there, that means the record is what we call dirty. It's a dirty record. The data has not been saved to the table yet. But you don't have to worry about that. We'll talk more about dirty records later. That only becomes a problem when you're working with multi-user databases. When you've got two or three people working on the same database, if your record is dirty, it can cause some problems. We'll address that in the future. Now, keep in mind, while you're working with the table, that only you the database developer is going to work with the table directly. You're going to keep other people out of your tables and out of your queries. You're going to build forms and reports for them to see. Your whole database interface will be based on forms, and they can print out reports. They're never going to see your tables and queries directly. We'll talk more about this in a couple of lessons. Now, way over here on the right side, you've got this click to add. They added the functionality for you to add new fields out here by picking a data type like long text or rich text or number and you can add the fields right here in data sheet view. I personally don't like this. If I want to make changes to the structure of my table I want to come back over here and go back to design view and this is where we can see our entire list of fields and we can add a new field by scrolling down to the bottom right down there. This is how I want you to design your tables. I'll show you how this works later. It's okay, but I prefer using Design View. Okay, so we've got one customer entered into our table. In the next lesson, we're going to add some more. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for updates. I post new videos all the time. Click the Start Lesson 7 right now. And also, be sure to visit my website at accesslearningzone.com for more free videos and to sign up for the entire Level 2 series for just $1.